A recent analysis of the midterm elections, talking to voters, doing focus groups, interviews, polls, whatever it is, but it was put together actually by the Associated Press and Fox News of all groups. And what they found was that 44% of voters listed the future of democracy in this country as the single most important factor for them when they voted in the midterms, 44%. So it's not a majority, but it was in fact a plurality. Most people who went to the polls said, oh my God, this country's in trouble. There's extremism. We got to do something to preserve America itself. That group, that 44% overwhelmingly voted for Democrats by 20 points over Republicans. And I bring that up because Republicans have an extremism problem. And the voters know this, the voters voted based on that. They look at this Republican extremism, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates, Trump, of course, Lauren Boebert. And they say, no, we're, we're, we're not doing this as a country. This is not going to be who we are. We're not going to let the wackadoos define us. I'm voting against it. And that of course is what cost the Republicans. Now, obviously the three members of Congress I mentioned, Green, Gates, and Boebert, they all won. But the other extremists out there, your Carrie Lakes, your Mastrianos, your Dr. Oz's, uh, they lost, as did many, many others. Herschel Walker, another great example. And they lost because re uh, uh, voters are tired of the extremism. So Republicans have an extremism problem. They're doing their little autopsy right now, trying to figure out where we went wrong. But they're never going to acknowledge that. And the bigger problem is that not only are they not going to acknowledge it, but ever since the midterms, that extremism has actually gotten worse. Like as bad as it was before November 8th, it is so much worse right now. For example, Marjorie Taylor Greene, of course, at her recent event up in New York with the young Republican group saying, Hey, if me and Steve Bannon had been in charge of planning the January 6th Capitol riot, we would have been successful because we would have been armed. That's extreme and, and comments like that actually do turn off American voters. And then of course, shortly after that, you had Donald Trump calling for the termination of the United States constitution itself, which came after he had dinner with white nationalists and an anti-Semite. And the list just gets worse and worse because we also, this past week, last week had the text messages sent to Mark Meadows from 34 sitting members of Congress calling to overturn the elections, one of them calling for martial law, and that's extremism. And things like that, when they become public, whether it's through, you know, being leaked to the press or these morons going out there and just straight up saying it, that turns off voters. And by the way, for the record, every one of these things I've just mentioned should already be in democratic ads running all over the country. Like you can run ads even when there's not an election imminent. And that's what needs to happen. Keep this stuff fresh in people's minds. They will forget it two months from now. Hell, they've probably already forgotten about most of it. Keep it fresh, run the ads and save them and run them again during election season. That's what the Democrats need to be doing because the voters, as those, you know, focus groups, everything showed they're sick of the extremism. And if they were sick of it in November, they're probably even more sick of it now, because as I said, it's only getting worse. A Republican strategist by the name of Brendan Steinhauser actually said this, and this really, I think sums up the Republican extremism problem. <clears throat> Unfortunately, some in the GOP are determined to say outrageous and frightening things that they believe have wide appeal, but they do not and responsible leaders on the right need to speak out against such rhetoric. But that's the overwhelming problem. First of all, you got no real leaders in the Republican party with enough spine to stand up and say, hold up, y'all are crazy. Stop saying that or get out of my party. Nobody's going to do that on the right. The second part is that they do think this has broad appeal because they're speaking in their bubbles. And when they say the things in their bubbles and the crowd cheers, they're like, well, clearly people want to hear this. People want to talk about being armed and storming the Capitol. People want to hear about terminating the constitution. 
Yeah, they do. But only in your little bitty teeny tiny bubble that's getting smaller by the day. The normal people out there, the ones that actually decide the elections, the moderates, the independents, they hate it. And you're going to continue turning them off. And you're doing that at your own peril. I'm, I'm fine with letting you do it. The problem, of course, is that you do have extremists who take these words to heart and may turn them into action. That's why this is dangerous. But if Republicans don't learn that lesson, 2024 is going to be so much worse for them than 2022 was. Hey, everyone, this is Aspen. And did you know that for the low, low cost of zero dollars per day, you can subscribe to the Fair and Balanced YouTube channel. We also encourage you to like, comment, and share. But again, click that subscribe button and help Aspen oh, not be so grumpy.